morning, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, welcome. And uh, I believe, Chewe, have you shared? Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. It's good to see everyone. Uh, before I get into sharing the word, uh, please know that um, we're having Hallelujah Night on October 31st. Hallelujah Night. And it's a time for, it's really for the kids. And so I uh, encourage you, if your parents, you know, come out with your children to Hallelujah Night. And um, if you don't mind, after the service, let a, let a brief meeting uh, for teachers of the Keith Church, parents and volunteers, after the service, they're meeting in the Keith Church. And the director of our children's ministry, uh, Tandy, has a word or two to share with parents, volunteers, and teachers of the Keith Church. Amen. Uh, at Overcomers, every month we have a theme that we pick, and by God's grace, we, we go through topics related to the team, uh, the theme, and uh, thank you. And this month, we're talking about mission, uh, sharing the gospel. We're talking about mission, uh, sharing the gospel. Um, and in the next couple of minutes, uh, I'll share what the Lord has laid in my heart. And then after that, we'll just spend some time worshiping God. Amen. And praising God, because God is good. Hallelujah. I always like to praise God. Amen. Uh, because when I think about where God has brought me from, uh, the fact that if I had my way, I wouldn't be alive today. Uh, so that's why when I praise God, I can, I can be crazy. Uh, I'm gentle when I'm speaking, but when I'm praising God, I'm not gentle. Hallelujah. Uh, David praised God so hard that uh, his clothes fell off. Okay? Uh, I'm, I'm not there yet. And I don't think I want to get there. But when you praise God, praise God with everything you have. Amen. Because God is good. Uh, we've shared some... Uh, what we've done today is to share uh, like the, a, a, a summary of the service, uh, or the sermon. And the reason why we do that, or why I'm trying to do that, is so that uh, you can have something to take. <coughs> excuse me. You can have something to take home. Uh, you can cross-reference what was said. You know, if something wasn't said right, you can send me a text or a chat. Say, hey, pastor, you said this. Can you please explain? Or if you have more information, you can share with me. Amen. I don't know everything. I'm also learning. Hallelujah. And we're all on this journey together. In Mark chapter 16, uh, Mark 16, 15 to 18, uh, the book of Mark chapter 16, we're talking about mission, uh, sharing the gospel. Uh, in Mark chapter 16, verses 15, uh, when Jesus was leaving, he said unto them, Go ye into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hallelujah. He said, Go into the whole world, go into all nations and preach this good news. Hallelujah. And talk about this good news. Go into every nook and cranny of the world and talk about the good news. And so God's mind, God's will is that the good news is shared with every single person on this planet. Amen. Uh, the good news is shared with every single person on this planet. Now somebody might say, well, what is the good news? Hallelujah. Uh, you cannot share what you don't have. Amen. And sometimes we are afraid of sharing the good news because perhaps we don't really know what we have in Christ. Perhaps we don't really understand what happened to us when we gave our life to Christ. Perhaps we don't really, really understand what happened on the cross when Jesus said, it is finished. And sometimes we are afraid of sharing the good news because we don't really understand. Or maybe we do understand, but we haven't really experienced we haven't fully experienced what we know. And so we are shy of sharing because I say, ah, well, my life is not complete. You know, when my life is complete, then I'll share the good news. Amen. But that's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. If you wait until your life is complete, everything is in place, you will never share the good news until you get to heaven. Because nobody ever has everything in place. Hallelujah. But you have something that God is doing in your life. And sometimes we are waiting for some time somewhere to have everything. When God says, I've already given you everything you need. Hallelujah. When God says, you're already my child, you have everything you need. And so today I want to talk about what is this good news about Jesus Christ. Amen. What is this good news all about? The good news that we share, what is it really all about? And we cannot talk about it. I know some of us know these things in details. And praise God, that's fantastic. But sometimes it's good to remind ourselves of what we already know. Hallelujah. 
it's good to kind of brush the ABC again and say, ah, this is what I know, this is what I believe, this is what happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you're here today and you haven't given your life to Jesus, my prayer is by the end of today's service, you will see some of the goods that Christ has in store for you. And all he's waiting for you is for you to say, Lord, here I, here I am, just take me. Hallelujah. It all began or it all begins in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, 28. You know, when God was creating everything, uh, he, he made things step by step, day by day. And then he created man and woman and, and he made a proclamation. The scripture says, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. Hallelujah. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Now, those first two blessings, God also pronounced it on every other thing he created. On the fishes, he said, be fruitful and multiply. And so if God stopped there, then there is no difference between human beings and fish or human beings and animals. Because every other thing that God created that was living, he said, be fruitful and multiply. But he did not stop there. He kept going. Amen. He said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Hallelujah. If something is missing in the earth, your job is to make sure that thing is corrected. Amen. If something needs to be replenished on the earth, if there's a problem on the earth, you are sent to the earth to be a problem solver. You are a solution to a problem that the earth has been in pain about. Amen. And so God gave man and woman the responsibility to fill the gaps that the earth has. Hallelujah. And so if the earth needs a chair, well, maybe you can build a chair for people to sit on. Amen. If folks are feeling very hot and the earth needs an air condition in people's rooms, well, you replenish the earth. Amen. And what it means is that everything that we need to replenish the earth is already on the earth. Hallelujah. God has given us every resource, everything we need to replenish the earth. I tell people that, you know, I'm a scientist. I say science is interesting because sometimes as scientists, we speak in terms of facts. You know, this is what it must be. This is what it is. But the truth is that science is really discovery. Amen. Science is progressive discovery. We discover something today based on some formulas or based on observation. And we say, yes, that's it. And then 10 years later, somebody comes and says, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just found something else. Okay, that's it. And then 10 years later, somebody says, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just found something else. And so science is really discovery of what God has already given to us. Hallelujah. And it's progressive discovery and so god said man woman your job is to be a solution to the earth if the earth has a problem the fish is not meant to solve it you're meant to solve it amen hallelujah and so what that means is every single person that is in this room you are a solution to a problem the earth has amen it doesn't have to be a big solution it says that it doesn't have to be something that goes on cnn but it can be a solution even in your community it can be a solution to something in your family hallelujah there might be a family problem that has been there ages after ages. And God says, I'm going to send Dwayne, hallelujah, to be a solution to the problem in that family. And so God said, replenish the earth. Be a solution provider. But he didn't stop there. Amen. He said, and subdue it. Hallelujah. Subdue it. Let it be under your control. Hallelujah. Subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God says subdue the earth. Don't destroy the earth. Amen. Don't cut down all the trees that there's nothing more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take care of the earth, but subdue it. Be in charge and have dominion over every living thing that walks on this planet. And so what God really did was God created a place for humanity and gave it to us as a gift. Hallelujah. That was the good news in the beginning. And I believe that God, that, that man was, you know, there are some dimensions that Adam walked in and Eve walked in that went recorded in the scripture that we'll only find out when we get to heaven. <laughs> Amen. 
how do I know? Because if you look at, if you keep reading, God actually had Adam name all the animals, name all the fishes, name all the birds, name all the animals. You know, uh, some scholars say, well, like he could fly, he could swim without the need for apparatus, he could move in different dimensions because he was really, he had this ability that was supernatural because God made him to be in charge of the whole earth. And God will come every now and then to talk with him and say, hey, Adam, what, how, what's, what's up? How is it going? Any challenges? No, God, I'm, I'm fine. I'm taking care of, I mean, the fish gave me a problem yesterday, but I spoke to the fish. The fish is fine now. And that goat that you created, that goat is really stubborn. Lord, oh my, God, help me. But Lord, don't worry. I took care of the goat. Hallelujah. And so God, that's very good. So how are you doing down here? I'm doing fine. Lord, how are you doing up here? Well, up there, you know those angels, they give me trouble every now and then, and I come down here to have a chat with you. Amen. And that's Patrick's version, okay? <laughs> Before you say, where is it in the Bible? <laughs> Hallelujah, don't kill me yet. <laughs> Amen. And so, Adam and God had this relationship, this intimacy, where God would come down and take a walk, and they would walk together, they would talk together, they would chat together. You see, Adam had express entry into God's presence. I feel Adam could, like, say, Lord, uh, could you please come down? I need to talk to you. I have a problem. Hallelujah. And I believe that God will whoom, come down right away. Yes, what, what's it, Adam? Say, Lord, there's this plant I saw. What, what, you know, this plant, how should I take care of it? And God said, I've given you the wisdom. You, you know what to do. Okay, Lord, thank you. Go back. Okay, Adam, see you later. Amen. I believe they had that kind of intimacy. He had direct access. But then God gave him a warning. I said, Adam, there are two trees. You can eat any tree in this garden, but there's one that you shouldn't touch. The day you touch that tree, or you touch the fruit of that tree, you will die. And I don't think they really understood the ramification of that action. Amen. They didn't really understand. But the devil understood. And so in, in Genesis, the enemy, the devil, decided to come down and tempt Adam and Eve. But he had a problem. The problem the devil had was no living being was allowed access to earth without a, hum a, a humus body. Amen. Now, what I mean by a humus body, a body that was made out of the earth. You see, our bodies, this, this flesh is from the earth. Hallelujah. And every living thing, the body is made out of the earth. And so, no entity was allowed onto planet earth without a humus body. Now, think about this. If I tell you, uh, Vanessa, I'm going to Mars tomorrow. Hallelujah. I'm going to Mars tomorrow. I'm going like this to Mars. I'm going like this to the moon, okay? <laughs> you know the smile, and she's like, oh my goodness, this guy is either crazy, or he's, he just drank something last night. There is no way I'll go to the moon dressed like this. Am I right? Amen. Why? Because no entity that is not wearing <laughs> space suit can survive on the moon without that space suit. And so if I was to go to the moon today, I have to go and get a space suit, learn how to use it, I had to wear another outer covering in order to survive on the moon. Amen. And so when God created planet Earth, he made a command, a he made a decree that no entity, living entity, was allowed to operate on this Earth without a body, without a covering made from Earth. That was why the devil needed the serpent. Hallelujah. The devil was a spirit, and the spirit, he couldn't come and tempt them directly I so said, went to the, to, to the serpent. The serpent, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Can I please borrow your body? I want to do something. And so the serpent lent his body to the devil, and the devil entered the serpent. And through the serpent came to Eve and began to talk to Eve. And Eve fell. You guys know the story. You know, humanity fell. And then God released a curse upon the serpent and a curse upon the devil. Now, scholars say that, um, some scholars say that the serpent used to walk all until God said, of course, you're going to crawl on your belly for the rest of your life. Amen. And so the enemy could only enter this planet, only access this domain to get something from Adam by taking on the form of a being that has the humus or the human or the, or the earth kind of body. Now, if you remember when Jesus went to cast out the guy that had the demon, what did they say? They said, please just cast us into the pigs. Amen. Which means that demons can live in pigs. They can live in cats too. Now, it doesn't mean you go home looking at every cat and say, hey, <laughs> you know, every dog. 
in the dog bag. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, geez, I cast. No, no, no. Amen. It doesn't mean that every cat and every dog and every mouse, you know, is a demon. But it just means that they can inhabit the body of a creature on this planet. But the bad news is that when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they lost everything. And when I say everything, they lost the most important thing. They lost access to the presence of God. Amen. They lost intimacy. God came knocking. Adam, Adam, where are you? And he did something that most husbands do today. <laughs> Amen. It's my wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, go talk to that woman. That woman is that woman's fault. Amen. We know we are good at Lord. And then the woman said, Lord, it's the serpent's fault. The serpent didn't say, Lord, is the devil. <laughs> Amen. But God came knocking and man was nowhere to be found. And so something began to happen. God cursed the same ground. God said that this ground, you're in charge of this ground, subdue the ground. A curse was placed upon the ground because of that disobedience. Hallelujah. Man was shut out from heaven. Couldn't access God anymore the way he used to be able to. Amen. Sickness, sin took over. The humus body that was subdued by the spirit man began to subdue the spirit man because the humus body got power from sin. And so sin entered the world and we were all doomed. Now God started thinking and before he, th thank God that God is very strategic. Amen. Because the devil knew that there was no way God could save human as God. Why? Because there was a decree that no spirit entity can enter the planet without humus. Amen. And so God couldn't say, who? Say, no, no, no. Hallelujah. And so the enemy was happy, but God had a plan. Hallelujah. He told his son, son, I'm going to create these human beings. They will mess up. Will you go down and save them? Say, yes, I will. And that was God's plan, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus was God's plan and is God's plan and is God's redemption for mankind and for humanity. Amen. And so if you go through the Old Testament, every now and then God will speak that someone is coming. The Messiah is coming. Someone is coming. Someone is coming. And they read it. They were happy about it, but didn't really dawn on them what God was about to do. Until we get to the New Testament where the angel appears to Mary and says, hey, you're going to have a child. And by the way, <laughs> you're not going to know any man or know any any man okay <laughs> amen uh, i'm using a, a decoded language because kids are here but they're going to have a child a supernatural child without knowing any man and and mary said ha, how is that possible so don't worry the holy spirit will come upon you and so what god did was he became flesh hallelujah it's, john tells us in, in john chapter one he said in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word became flesh. And so Jesus took the form of a human being, went into the womb of a woman, was born like a human being, and so you had God taking on humus. Hallelujah. Now, it was a big gamble by Jesus. You know why? Because if he had messed up, he'd be trapped forever in the body of a human being. Big gam huge gamble. And that was why he had every step of his ministry, he needed to depend on God because when he left heaven, he left everything there. He left his powers there. He left omnipotent and his omnipresence abilities. He had to depend on God for every detail of his ministry, just like we have to depend on God today for every detail of our ministry. Amen. And so he came, Bible says, for this reason the Son of Man was born that he might destroy the works of the devil. The angel told Mary that he shall save his people from their sins. And so he came on the earth, he walked on the earth, he was doing miracles, he was healing the sick, he was opening blind eyes and causing deaf ears to boom, to hear. But that was not the main reason why he came. Hallelujah. That was not the main thing why he came. He didn't just come to do miracles. He came to train some disciples to show them how they ought to walk after he leaves. And so the devil began to plan and say, okay, this guy is messing my plan up. Let's, how do we kill him? So the devil got some of his friends together, came up with a plan, got Judas involved, and crucified the Lord God Almighty. 
And when Jesus died, the devil said, Oh my goodness, I've been so stupid. I should have known better. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because Hebrews tells us that the only way God could access the devil was to die. The only way he could enter the devil's domain and, and, and deal with him was through death. Hallelujah. And so when the enemy killed the Son of God, he gave him access to his place. And the Son of God could not be held in hell because he was sinless. Hallelujah. And thank God he didn't stay there because on the third day, Jesus rose again from the dead. And he lives forevermore. Amen. And that's the good news. He didn't just rise from the dead. When he rose from the dead, he said, anyone that believes in me will have my life in them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the good news is that when you accept Jesus into your life, in John chapter 3, verse 16, uh, Jesus talking to Nicodemus, John 3, 16, talking to Nicodemus, he said, for God loved the world so much, so much, that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Anyone who believes in Christ has eternal life. Has the life of God. Amen. And so when we accept Jesus as, as Lord, we have eternal life. Number one I have on that, on that document is we are reconciled back to God and declared faultless. And so no matter what anyone has done, Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 to 23, uh, Colossians 1, 21 to 23. He said, this includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as he stand before him without a single fault. Hallelujah. And so no matter what sins an individual has committed, when they accept Jesus into their life, God declares them blameless and without a single fault. Amen. Number two, when that person accepts Jesus into their life, they become a child of God. In John chapter 1 verse 12, John chapter 1 verse 12, uh, John 1 12, it says, For as many, for all who believe him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. And so anyone who accepts Jesus right away is given the right of sonship. Amen. Now, when I say sons sheep, I mean both male sons and female sons. Hallelujah. You become a child of God. Number three, when we accept Jesus, something happens to our consciences, to our spirit. Amen. Something happens on the inside. Our consciences that is filled with evil works is purified by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 9, 9 to 27. Amen. The blood of Jesus comes and begins to clean us on the outside and purify our consciences. Hallelujah. And what happens is where we used to be dead to certain things, we come alive to those things. And so you find that, somebody that someone that used to steal, when they get saved, when they accept Jesus into their life, their heart no longer allows them to steal. Amen. If you have Jesus in your heart and you lie, you, 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 you can't live with it. Something will tell you, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't lie. Hallelujah. Why? Because your conscience has been quickened. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus has cleaned your conscience and made it whole again. Number four, when a person accepts Jesus into their life, they become partakers of a new agreement and the benefits that come with the agreement. You know, when, when God blessed Adam and Eve, when God blessed humanity in Genesis chapter 1 and they sinned, they broke that agreement. Amen. There was a curse that was laid on them instead of a blessing. When a person accepts Jesus, what happens, again in Hebrews 8, 7 to 12, they enter into a new agreement, a new covenant 
and new benefits accrue to them as a result of their being in Christ. And so if the person used to be very sick, they can lay hold on the healing benefit that comes with being in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! Because they are no longer in the kingdom of darkness, they are now in a covenant agreement with God. Number five, when a person accepts Jesus into their lives, they are delivered from the kingdom of darkness and anything that is associated with the kingdom of darkness. Uh, in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, he says, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Hallelujah. When a person accepts Jesus into their life, they are translated from one kingdom to a different kingdom. Now today, uh, we may not use the word kingdom, today we use the word country, amen, or nation, okay, or constituent. So they are, they, are, they, are, they are moved from one country to another country. They are moved from the country of the enemy to the country of God. Hallelujah. Now it's interesting, some of us, I mean most of us uh, came to Canada or in Canada as newcomers. And, and we know the kind of things that used to happen where we come from or the kind of benefits we did not have in the countries where we came from. And how that is so different from the benefits we have in the new country where we are. Hallelujah. And so the same thing, when a person is moved from the kingdom, the domain of the enemy, to the domain of Christ, things change. Your benefits change and you have authority as a child of God. Amen. Number six, which I love so much, you know, uh, is Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. Uh, Hebrews 10. Uh, this is the part that excites me a lot. Uh, Hebrews. Chapter 10. I'll, I'll, I'll go to verse 19. Uh, Hebrews 10, 19, 19. If you have time, when you go home, please read Hebrews 10. 1 to 19. Hebrews 10, 19. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a believer, you don't have to enter God's presence. Yeah, uh, Lord, it's, it's me. Amen. You don't have to be shy or ashamed when you enter God's presence. You know, for, 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 for those of us who are parents and have kids, you know, when your kids want to come to you and get something, they're not scared. I mean, hopefully not. Amen. <laughs> I mean, when I was going, let's come back to today. Hallelujah. You know, some of us, when we were growing up, before you ask for anything, you have to think it through, you know, make your mind, strategize, and say, okay, uh, I'll wait for when dad or mom is very happy, and then you go in and ask, like, get out again, you know, before they change their mind. Hallelujah. God is not like that. Amen. You can go in anytime. You can come boldly. Boldly. Hallelujah. Because, why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Verse 20, by his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him, for our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Amen. He said, go in. Hallelujah. Don't ask, don't tell Brachewe, can you please go in for me and go and pray? And when you're done praying, come and tell me what No, 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 no. Go in. Amen. Don't say, ah, pastor, can you go in, please? No, no, no. Go in. Every single child of God can go in boldly. You don't have to wait for pastor. Amen. You don't have to wait for chairway. You don't have to wait for your life group leader. You can go in boldly and ask God anything you want to ask God. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, they did not have that. They, you, you dare not. <laughs> You will die before you get to. <laughs> Hallelujah. You dare not. There were rules, there were regulations that only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies 
and the high priest only went in once a year once a year he goes into the holy of holies offers blood and runs out before god before he died <laughs> before <laughs> so okay I'm, I'm going to throw a joke here i'm thinking when he's going in he tells his family uh, just in case you don't see me again you know i love you guys yes my will <laughs> hallelujah he goes in he's scared there are things he has he has to make sure that the i's are dotted the t's are crossed i mean the guy is shaking and he's going in he's looking back like i may not come back but i love you guys <laughs> amen because if he makes a single mistake boom he's dead but now god says all i need is a sincere heart amen I don't care what you've done. Just be sincere with me and come in. Hallelujah. Just tell me how things are. Don't, don't try and just say, Lord, I messed up yesterday. Lord, I, right now I don't feel like talking to you. But I don't, know, I don't have anybody else to talk to. <laughs> so, Lord, that's why I'm here. Hallelujah. He said, I, I love that. Come in with sincere hearts. Come in. Come in boldly and talk to me. And for me, that's the most beautiful thing about knowing Christ. Is I can talk to God. Hallelujah. That's what, I, I love that the most. Thank God for the healing, the deliverance. Thank God for prosperity. But what I love most about my faith is that I can wake up at 1 a.m. and just start talking to God. Amen. I can tell him all the things I'm afraid of, all the things I'm, I'm angry about, all the people that made me, that ticked me off, and I, ah, ah. I can come in sincerely. I don't have to camouflage or pretend or be somebody else. I say, Lord, this is who I am. Be with me and help me. Amen. That's number six. Number seven, I'm going to run through quickly. I'm sure there are more. Number seven is we are delivered from curses. Amen. Please tell someone by your side, you're not cursed. You're blessed. Amen. I, I don't think they heard you. Okay. Please say, you're not cursed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Any curse that was laid on you, Christ took it. Amen. Anything that is a curse, whether generational curse, fathers, 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 mothers, 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 mother from the mother-in-law side or the father-in-law's father-in-law. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus took it. Galatians tells us that on the tree, on the cross, he became a curse. Hallelujah. He took on himself the curse that was meant to be laid on us. And so really, all you have to do is to stand your ground. Amen. If you see something and people are like, ah, you're cross. No, in Jesus' name, every get out right now. Hallelujah. Because you are a child of God, you have authority, you're blessed, you're not cursed. Amen. If you're studying and you feel that each time you read, you can't understand anything, you say, in Jesus' name, I have a sound mind out. Any confusion, get out in the name of Jesus. You lay hands on your head, you lay hands on your chest, and you speak what God says into your life and declare who you are in Christ Jesus. Once the devil hears you say what you are, he runs away. Why? If they like a, if like a rolling lion, the scripture says he resists the devil and he will do what? He will flee. He's that scared. When the enemy meets a Christian who knows who they are in Christ, the enemy will run. Amen. And so you are not cursed, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Number eight, we enter into God's rest. Amen. When a person, when a person becomes a Christian, accept Jesus, they enter into God's rest. Hallelujah. Now, you still have to work hard. It doesn't mean that now you can you know, throw your legs on the couch and sleep till 1, a, 1, a, 1 p.m. Amen. <laughs> yeah, please, brother, go to work. I'm in God's rest. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. No, no. You still have to work hard. Amen. You still have to go to work. You still have to sometimes struggle. There'll be trouble. There'll be pain. There'll be tears sometimes. Why? Because as long as the edge remains, nighttime and, and daytime will come. Cold will come. Heat will come. Summer, winter, fall, spring will come. There will be different seasons in your life. You see, go through all those things. But like Jesus, you'll be sleeping in the boat while the boat is in trouble. Hallelujah. That's God's rest. God's rest is that the boat is in trouble. You're sleeping. And people are saying, are you crazy? Can't you see the boat is in trouble? And you're sleeping because you know that the one that keeps you will not allow you to die even if there are storms all around you. Hallelujah. I think Jesus knew that even if the goat, even if, I think goat, even if that goat, that goat, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Jesus knew that even if the boat capsized, he would just float on water. 
Hallelujah. And he will keep sleeping. I mean, he might get cold, but he will keep sleeping on water. And so God's will, when you get into Christ, is that you operate from a place of rest and not from a place of stress. Hallelujah. If you're feeling stressed, ah, then either of two things, you're either taking on too much, because sometimes we take on too much. Amen. We don't, you know, sit down and analyze, okay, this is enough. We take on this and this and this and this and this. Hallelujah. Or you've allowed some things in that you shouldn't allow. Or you've forgotten who you are in Christ Jesus. Scripture says, cast all your cares upon the Lord. Be anxious about nothing. Amen. And so, would there be challenges? Of course there will be. It's in Scripture. But you operate from a place of rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall know one. Makes me to lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comforts me. Hallelujah. My enemies are so many, but guess what you are doing, Lord? You are preparing a table before me in the very presence of my enemies. They hate me, but I keep eating. <laughs> Hallelujah. Operating from a place of rest. Amen. Number nine, we're delivered from fear. You know, some people live their lives full of fear. And, you know, the problem of fear, money cannot solve it. Amen. You can have a lot of money and still be living in fear. I remember a young man, you know, one time, I was very young, you know, and his sister came to our house asking for charismatic, charismatics, and I called my, my leader, I went to his house, you know, and when I entered the house, I was like, oh my goodness, this is, wow, oh my goodness. Amen. But the guy couldn't sleep. He, had, he couldn't, he couldn't, he had all the money, but he couldn't sleep, he needed prayer, he was afraid, and there wasn't joy in that home. Amen. And so I learned quickly that money cannot solve everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. And sometimes we think, I just throw more money, get more money. Hallelujah. But when you are in Christ Jesus, he delivers you from fear. Amen. Say, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. In Hebrews 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 15, Hebrews chapter 2, <coughs> am, am I going too fast? Checking in. No, a little, okay, thank you. Amen. I get very excited with these things. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. Therefore, since because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power over death. Amen. And so he had to become a human being to die. And only by dying could Jesus break the power of the devil who had the power of death. In verse 15, it says, uh, verse 15, Hebrews chapter 2. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. When you are in Christ Jesus, you should not be afraid of death. Amen. No believer should be afraid of death. Because you know exactly where you're going. Or you should know exactly where you're going. Amen. And so, Christ delivered us from the biggest fear of all, the fear of dying, the fear of shedding this human body. Hallelujah. But now we know that when we shed this body, when we close our eyes and we open it again, we are in his presence because of what Jesus has done. The last three before we wrap up, number 11 is he delivers us when we're in Christ Jesus, we are delivered from eternity in hell. Now, I know that these days, you know, messages about hell and, you know, it's not very common. It's not, you know, in those days, when we give our life to Christ, uh, almost every message is hell, 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 you know. And there's nothing bad with it. Hallelujah. It's important to preach a balanced gospel. Amen. To preach the whole truth of the good news. But 
brother and sisters there is a place called hell <laughs> amen hell is real hell is real scripture talks about it there's a place that people go when they don't know jesus and they are there forever for eternity and god sent his son so that no one will go there because hell was built for the devil not for humans amen hell is meant for the devil and his his angels not for human beings and so god paid the price so that no human being will spend eternity in hell with the devil and his angels and so when a person accepts jesus into their life they are delivered from that event happening in their life from spending eternity in hell amen number 12 when a person accepts jesus in their life the holy spirit comes and lives on the inside of them amen the holy spirit comes and leaves oh i forgot number 10 they are delivered from the bondage of the flesh hallelujah uh, number 12 the holy spirit comes and lives on the inside of them and enables them to live like christ paul writing he said don't you know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit and that the holy spirit lives in you when a person becomes a christian when a person gives their life to christ the holy spirit whoom, comes and lives on the inside of them and empowers them from the inside to live the life that christ lives hallelujah now they also have access to the baptism of the holy spirit so that they are further empowered for ministry amen and so god doesn't just save us and say wow they are saved now he gives us the himself through the holy spirit so that we can live like christ live and number 13 which i also love a lot amen first john chapter 5 verse 4 to 5 <laughs> amen first john chapter 5 verse 4 to 5 uh, first john chapter 5 verse 4 to 5 amen thank you he said for every child of god defeats this evil world and will achieve this victory through our faith hallelujah everyone that is born of god is an overcomer amen every single one that is born of christ born of god is an overcomer it means that you're no longer bound i call it bsc <laughs> amen you are no longer bound by your situation and circumstance hallelujah you are no longer your destiny is no longer determined by what happened to you when you were a child hallelujah your destiny is no longer determined by what happened to you when you were growing up amen you're now a master over your situations and circumstances in mark 11 jesus was speaking he said if anyone says to this mountain move and be cast to the sea and believes in their heart what they say they will have it amen he said go into the world and preach the gospel in my name you will cast out demons you will take up poison it will harm you you will drink crazy stuff nothing will happen to you hallelujah he said for he said, he said wait upon in, in Acts 1 verse 8 you shall receive power when the holy ghost comes on you and you shall be witnesses in the last day i'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons your daughters shall prophesy young men shall see visions old men will dream dreams amen and so when a person comes into a relationship with christ when a person gets born again or accept jesus they begin to experience genesis chapter 1 verse 28 amen they can subdue and they have dominion hallelujah when a person gets born again genesis 1 28 comes back into their life hallelujah they can be fruitful they can multiply they can replenish the earth bring solutions that no one had amen they can subdue and they have dominion what happens a lot of time is we don't know that we have these things hallelujah and so really you can go into your school and things are messing up and you say in jesus name this school align amen and it will that's how much authority you have in christ jesus hallelujah the truth is as christians we can control the affairs of canada we can control what happens in this nation but i don't think we know that or we've 
pay the price to tap into that level of authority which we have hallelujah we can we can we can control things we can speak to the weather amen we hear something is happening in tornado in, in florida we can say lord in jesus name you just go this way don't hurt anyone that's how much authority you have hallelujah that's how much authority is in you that the genesis 128 blessing is yours and if you don't see those things in your life you have the right to go boldly to god's presence and ask god why <laughs> hallelujah amen now you must be ready to hear what god has to say <laughs> you may not like it <laughs> but he will give you an answer hallelujah if you don't see genesis 128 in your life as a believer you go and don't ask me you can ask me hey, my, but i may not have the answer but if you go to god directly boldly say lord what's happening here i don't see this stuff in my life what is happening here lord if you don't answer me and i die you'll be in trouble in heaven you better answer me right now <laughs> before i get to heaven <laughs> otherwise you have no peace you can have that kind of conversations with god Remember, when I, when I got saved, when I met Jesus Christ in October of 1995, one of the things, I remember listening to a man of God preaching, uh, Pastor E. Adeboe, and then he would say things like, the Lord said that there's someone here. I'm like, what? what do you mean? How did you know that the Lord said? <laughs> Amen. And I thought he was joking, but when I started hearing about results, I'm like, wow. So a human being can hear God speak. Hallelujah. And be able to relate that information to this planet and most of you here have had the same experience amen most of you here can tell me of a time that god told you something and you did exactly that and you saw the results that god told you you will see but what happens is we stop being consistent in paying the price to keep getting that kind of information and that kind of access even though it belongs to us hallelujah we take god for granted amen we get too busy for god or we decide to run on the engine of this flesh only to find out at the end of the day that god's way is the best way hallelujah god's way i know the plans i have for you plans of good not of evil to give you a hope and a future hallelujah christianity is real Jesus is real. It's not about coming to church on Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can come to church every Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and two times on Saturday and not be a Christian. Amen. It's about being able to call him Abba Father. Hallelujah. Call him Abba Father. And so we're going to pray. 